Hello and welcome to the Rocket League map making tutorial series. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a map in Blender, basically. So I'm going to assume you already know basic navigation. So middle mouse wheel to move around, shift, middle mouse button. And so you can move around and you can know how to create objects and stuff like that. So first thing uh, we're going to do is I already have this saved. Saving isn't hard. I'm not going to show you how to save things. Um, but one thing you do want to do is you can see I have a bunch of extra objects here. What you're going to do is edit preferences, add-ons, type in extra and extra objects. Just hit that checkbox and it should update and you should get all of these extra, you know, options down here for different meshes. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you about the one-stop chop shop. So, so here in the Google Drive, the links are here for, for the one-stop chop shop and something else that we're going to talk about in a second. Uh, basically, the One Stop Chop Shop gives you a bunch of PSKs from every single map ever. Well, not ever, but most of them. So you can go to Maps, and then Manfield, which is Euro Stadium, and then Static Mesh. And you can see there's a ton of PSK meshes in here. Uh, you can't actually import a PSK into Blender by default. You need an add-on, which is what this is, which is the second link. Uh, this is the Import PSK PSA add-on. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to import PSKs and PSAs. And I'm not going to show you how to do this. It tells you how to install it. It's not that hard. Here we go. We're going to add a plane. Very basic. Oh, wait. Before that, I'm going to show you what the PSKs are. So I actually have all the PSKs installed. Manfield. And it... so let's just say I want to get all the bleachers in. There you go. This, this is what the Manfield bleachers are. Basically, and then you can obviously go do the rest of them. The bases. You might notice that I've done this for a map that I've done before. And then seat base. And then stairs. You know, you just you can just import however many you want. And then to finish it. You put the egg people in, and the eggs aren't actually eggs, they're, they're squares, but... And there you go, there is an entire field, there's the entire man field field, <laughs> right there. But that's how you can import whatever mesh you, whatever Rocket League mesh you want, into Blender. But now I'm just going to add a plane. And I'm going to scale it up, I don't know how much, about 10, that's good. So... First thing I'm going to do is I want to scale this to be good. So for scaling, if you add a UV sphere, that's how big the ball is. Just the default size, that's how big it is. And for the car, you scale on the X and Z by 0.5. And that's how big the car is. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And you can make this whatever you want. This is just a plane because it's a tutorial. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But I'm going to select this edge. I'm going to extrude it up by, I don't know, 10. Eh, a little bit more. About oh, five more. That looks good. So I'm going to ramp this. So I'm going to select this edge, and I'm going to hit Control B, and I am going to bevel it. So by default, yours probably looks like this. Uh, in order to add more vertices, just go mouse wheel up, or mouse wheel down, and it'll add less or more segments and at the bottom you can see the amount of segments and the width that you're beveling i always do nine segments i find nine segments works well and i would always do at least 0.25 for a good ramp um you can all you can obviously do whatever you want but i usually do 0.25 or a little bit more now i want to put a goal into this side what i'm going to do is i'm going to import something that you can download into the google drive also called the goal cutout the goal cutout is a cutout of the goal. I mean, that's all it is. Uh, if you want to know how it, how I made this, uh, all I did was import a PSK. Uh, probably Manfield is the one I used because I like Manfield the most. And then I just imported the goal STD collision, and then I just cut this out. of. I just deleted the rest of this and just cut the goal, and then added a little extra spot. So, you, you know, you could actually add it to a wall. So I'm going to go to the side view here, and that's about the middle, that's good. And then I'm going to put this 
into the wall with vertex snapping. And then I'm going to switch the snapping to increment. And this is how it, this is how you line it up. You just increment it. Nope. Increment it once. And that's the size of the goal. I purposely put this face out one because otherwise it won't add correctly. It won't, it just won't work. So I'm going to select my plane. I'm going to go into the wrench and I'm going to add a modifier, the Boolean, and I'm going to go to union and I'm going to select the goal and I'm going to hide the goal because what it does is it actually adds a duplicate of the goal. So like if you see this, uh, this is the goal that it's basing off of. You just want to hide it because it's going to duplicate it basically. And you can mess around with these settings, but fast seems to work. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's say I want to keep the, I want to scale the rest of the arena up, but I want to keep the goal there. So you could scale this and then move it. And the goal will stay relatively the same. Obviously it's back now because I scaled it on, uh, let's say I want to make it this way and this way. You can see the goal is staying where it is, but if I were to apply this and then move it, you can see the goal gets bigger with the mesh. So I would suggest waiting to apply all your modifiers. And then at the end, when you're done perfectly scaling every, or not perfectly scaling, but at least when you're done scaling, you can apply these and export it. But I'm going to apply it because I mean, it's good enough. I'm going to hide the preferences and I am going to tell talk to you about normals. So normals, you can see, whoops, normals, you can see by going to edit mode, viewport overlays and hitting this little button. I'm going to turn the size up. So this is, so the lines are facing the direction the normals facing. And I, that doesn't really make sense. I know, but um, there are much easier ways to think of this than using the, I hate using the lines. I never use them because it's just too confused or it's too much. So I actually go make sure in object mode and go to the same tick box and hit face orientation. So as you can see, the side, the lines we're pointing are blue and the rest of it is red. Basically anything you want the car to drive on needs to be blue. So for example, the car is driving on here. So let's say this was red. I would need to select all, control N and flip. Uh, you might see down here, this is button for mouse. I changed my hotkey for normals because I did it so much, but the default is control N. And if face orientation is too confusing, that's fine. There is another third option that you can do. Uh, just hit this over by viewport shading and then go to back face colon. So what this is going to do is show you how it's going to look in UDK. So. This is, how, this is what UDK is going to see. You can see that the side that the normal isn't facing is gone. It's completely disappeared. So you can only see the sides of the goal or the top of it. You can't see both sides. So if I go down here, you, you can only see the top of the goal now. This is what UDK is going to see. By default, Blender's normals are all double-sided. That's why you can't see this by default. But backface calling is nice if you want to just double check that everything is how it's supposed to be. Um, I always personally, I like force orient face orientation the most because I still like being able to work with both sides, even if I'm, you know, not using both. And then that's good. So we got our mesh here. So what I'm going to do is, oh, not hard ups. We're going to go to file, export, FBX. You're just going to want to match these settings. Uh, you can. You can pause the video and look through. It's not that complicated. Um, the selected objects and mesh are very important to do. So it, the selected objects will basically make it. So only the objects you have selected will export. So if I had this turned off, so if I had this turned off, it would export the sphere and the goal in the cube along with this plane. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to select that. Make sure this is Z forward and Y up and then face smoothing and these are both for animation I'm pretty sure and then click this add button and type in I don't know UDK or whatever you want and then you will create a preset so whenever you go to export you can just 
hit this. So this is what it looks like normally. And then you can just hit UDK and there you go. You're ready to export. That's what I did at the beginning to get these settings really quickly. But I'm gonna name this uh, full field. And we're gonna export. And then that's pretty much it. The only thing that we could do now is shade smooth. But I'll talk about that later when we get to texturing. But that's all for this video. I'll see you when we get into UDK.